Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is an English summary. A just and a translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Mawlana Qamru Zama Sahib Tamad Barakatuhum, which took place on Thursday, the 8th of Rajab, 1443, corresponding with the English date, 10th of February, 2022. This Majlis took place at 11 a.m. at Jamia Nurul Ulum Gataman in Palanpur. Shimali uh, Gujarat. Hazrat Wala starts off by quoting the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Khiyaru ummati man da'a ila Allahi wa habbaba ibadahu ilayh Hazrat Wala goes on to say Alhamdulillah I have in front of me this category of people which are the best and the choicest uh, individuals of this ummah So the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Khayrukum man ta'allama al-Qur'ana wa'allamahu That's the one we know and it is quite common. I quoted to you another hadith Khiyaru ummati man da'a ila Allah wa habbaba ibadahu ilayh Now, we are linked to the Qur'an and Majid somehow or the other in whichever little way. In fact, one alim writes even that person who take, who uh, makes arrangements for the mats or the musallas that we are sitting on has some type of portion with this uh, golden uh, silsila. He is also part and parcel of this golden chain. Allah Ta'ala keep us in this path and connected to the Quran and Majid. Allah Ta'ala keep us in this group and count us from amongst those who had followed and those who loved. خِيَارُ أُمَّتِي مَنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَحَبَّبَ عِبَادَهُ إِلَيْهِ The best from my Ummah is the one who calls to Allah and makes the servants of Allah beloved to Him. When I related this particular hadith to Hazrat Hakim Akhtar Sahib, then he said to me, he was so delighted, and he said, I am taking this back home to my country as a tuhfa and as a gift. Now this was the qadr that our mashayikh and our akabirin had for the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when a person is calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it shows perfection in deen. Rather it is our great fortune that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this hidayat and has kept us in this uh, silsila, especially in this day and age where people are pursuing simozar, people are chasing after and collecting, accumulating gold and silver in this day and age. If Allah Ta'ala has kept you, kept you connected to the Quran and Majid, it is a great uh, ni'mat. La yulhimuhu illa su'ada, and Allah Ta'ala does not inspire this type of orientation except to those who are fortunate it is a sign of great fortune we should make shukr to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this on one occasion we went to darulum dioban for a jalsa thereafter we passed by jalalabad and went to visit hazrat manana masiullah khasab hazrat wala is saying and when we went he was giving a majlis he was standing and he went on saying he just didn't complete saying this he went on and on about it emphasizing on this point to the students there in the madrasa that how is it that we are involved or we get caught up in ihsas e qahtari that we suffer from an inferiority complex we do not understand what is the worth the value of this ilm of Quran and Hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kun aliman, aw muta'alliman, aw mustami'an, aw muhibban, wala takunil khamisa. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Become an alim. If not, then a student. If you're not even doing either of the two, at least listen to what this group of people is saying. And if not even that, at least love this jama'at and this group that is connected and related to that of ilm of Qur'an and Hadith. This is a very noble ishtima and gathering. Allah Ta'ala accept it. 
Acceptance is everything. Even in this path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one is wusul, where we reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our uh, pers uh, pursuing this path, this tariq to Allah, we reach Allah. But after that, it's not all. After wusul, it is qubul, to be accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazarwala gives an example of a thief that breaks in to a home and is trying to get to the treasure or the money that he wants to steal. But is that thief welcome in that home? Is he beloved or is he hated? Are people throwing things at him? Are people, uh, do they love him or do they hate him? This thief that comes. So he comes on a bad note. He's not wanted there. Therefore, after reaching the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it, it is a great gift to be accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To say Allah once is better than this entire world and whatever it contains. I'll tell you another malfus of Hazrat Mawlana Masihullah Khasab, Hazrat Wala says. He says some people went to uh, Jalalabad and they were speaking. The discussion was that about I'tikaf. And Hazrat Wala goes, Mawlana Masihullah Khasab goes on to say, I'tikaf, suffer, suffer for I'tikaf, no ways. You could make I'tikaf in the masjid of your own time or your own town rather make this type of an intention that i am going to the khanka rather i am going for islah and nafs because this is farad you know after this malfus came and i came to know about it it was then that up till then i also kept it under that name of Atikaf. and then i started telling the people of khanka and islah and nafs it is from that time I started using that word and terminology also. So these Hazrat and these great uh, beacons of piety and spirituality keep on turning our attention to these type of things. So Dawat and the invitation is to so many things today. It is to evil, wickedness, lewdness. But the best of the people are those who are calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazarwala is saying, when I went to Aligarh University, I also spoke on the same hadith, Khairukum man al Quran wa The best amongst you is the one who learns the Quran and teaches it. But my emphasis was not on man al Quran wa The one who teaches the Quran, learns the Quran and teaches it, rather, to that category of people that I was speaking, my emphasis to them and the point of my discussion there was more on the words khairukum, that who is the best amongst you? I want you to study this hadith. I want you to see what type of decision did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam make about the best of people. The best of people, who are they? The people that are connected to Al-Quran, learning it and teaching it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us do it with ikhlas and sincerity listen O people O my beloveds Hazrat Wala is addressing this congregation of students and ulama and he's saying that according to how correct and how straight we become the effects of it will fall onto the ummah sahib kashaf the author the author of kashaf writes in his tafsir that the Yahud, what did they actually do with the teachings of the Torah? The Habuha, they, they, they went all out in writing it in gold and all other type of things just like this. But there was no question about adopting its teachings and the spiritual focus on the Talim of the Torah and everything was lost there. What's our Farad? What's our duty? What's the load that's on our shoulders? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us, Taraktu fikum thaqalain That I left uh, with you uh, the two weighty things. Kitabullah wa sunnati. The Quran, the kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my sunnah. I'm leaving this with you and I'm going. And in the true sense, the suluk and the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of it 
is in the Quran. This path that how can we reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is in the Quran. If someone would come to Hazrat Mawlana Fadl Rahman, Ganj Murad Abadi, with a book on Suluk and Tasawuf, he was from amongst our Mashaykh and Akabirin, and he would say, What is this? Hato, take it away. The Quran is sufficient, trying to impress on the minds and the hearts of people that this path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all and all of it is found in the Quran and Majid. Yes, yes, the suluk and tasawuf that our Akabirin had presented to us, and in their writings and in their works, they have taken it from Al Quran. The essence is Al Quran. So at this point in time, the challenges that have come against the Ummah are tremendous. The tests that are against the Ummah are so many. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to connect someone to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest thing a person can do. And that's what hadith, this hadith that I quoted to you in my khutbah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying to us, Khiyaru ummati, the best of my Ummah is the one who calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he makes the servants of Allah beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one is amal. Sometimes our focus and our minds is on that. But how many of us have the focus on akhlaq? And it is with this akhlaq also that we gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, A'mal, we speak about A'mal. What is A'mal? وَنَعْنِي بِالْأَعْمَالِ مَا هُوَ أَعْمَالُ الْقُلُوبِ And we mean by A'mal, those things that are related to the heart. And what is Af'al? Af'al is actually that which is related to the organs and the jawarih, our hands, our legs, etc. This is what Hazrat Shah Waliullah has written. Hazrat Shah Waliullah writes that it is the great favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has kept this lowly person, Kamtarine Ummah, this most insignificant person in the Ummah, he has kept him connected to the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us affinity with the Quran. Towards the end of his life, Hazrat Mawlana Shah Waliullah Sahib emphasized so much on the connection our connection with the Quran, whichever ulama would come, whether it was Hazamana Qari Tayyab Sahib, Hazamana Ali Miya Sahib, whoever it was, all these great people who came and sat in his gathering, he turned their attention to the Quran. He would say to them, let us come out of customary recitation and let us go to a genuine recitation, Hakiki Tilawat. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah Ta'ala keep us on this path. Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, in Ramadan, he would make one khatam of the Quran, he would write, set, thet, recite 30 juz every day. And his ma'mul and his practice throughout the year was that every day he would recite one manzil. He would be so delighted, so happy, Hazrat Wala is saying. He would come to me and he would say, Kamru Zama, today I read tomorrow's manzil as well. I read double. And on the occasion or the day where so much of work would come and he was unable to finish and complete the wazifa of the tilawat of one manzil of the Quran, then we would be able to understand the signs of that. Just by merely looking at him, he would be upset. He would be... Uh, disorientated, uh, upset, totally upset about it and I couldn't read that portion of the Quran and Majid. I have in front of me, Hazrat Wala goes on to say, Asharu Qawaid, the Risala of the Ten Principles, Fetus in Nufus, regarding the purification of the Nafs. The Arab Alim then quotes and he says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ Allah bestowed a favor on the believers when he sent in their midst a messenger from amongst themselves. Yet lu alayhim ayati, he recites to them his verses. Wa yuzakki him and purifies them from shirk, polytheism and other evils. 
wa yu'allimuhumul kitaba wal hikma and teaches them the book and things of benefits now the quran is one of the greatest things for the purification of the self after all it is the book of purification it is the kitab of tazkiyah its source its fountain and its basis the person who wants to puri wants purification and his self for his self he wants to purify himself he should seek it in the quran hazrat ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma used to say dhamina allah liman ittaba al quran alla yadilla fi ad dunya allah ta'ala guarantees the person who follows the quran that he will not go astray in this world wala yashqa fi al akhira no will he suffer misery in the year after thumma tala they after he recites the ayat of the quran in majid faman ittaba hudaya fala yadillu wala yashqa then he who follows my guidance will neither go astray nor fall into misery allah ta'ala says ya ayyuhan nas qad ja'atkum mau'izatun mir rabbikum o people an admonition admonition has come to you from your sustainer wa shifaa lima fi sudur a cure for the disease that is in your hearts wa hudaw wa rahmatul lil mu'minin a guidance and a mercy for the muslims now we need to have yaqeen and i'tiqad in this year that the quran is the cure for all types of sickness hazrat ikrama ibn abi jahal ikrama the son of abu jahal the arch enemy of islam radiyallahu ta'ala an says that when he used to pick up the quran in majid when he used to pick up pick up the quran he would say hada kalam rabbi this is the speech of my rabb he is to keep this in my, his mind he is to remind himself that this is the kalam of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala such a spiritual state used to overcome him he would hardly be able to recite and he would fall down unconscious qala ibn qayyim rahimahullah ibn qayyim rahimahullah said al quran huwa shifa tam min jami' al adwa al qalbiya wal badaniya wa adwa al dunya wal akhira the quran is a complete cure from all spiritual and physical maladies all spiritual and physical maladies of this world and the akhira gar na khast daad na daad khast if allah taala did not want to give you anything in the first place he would have not given you true quest desire and talab you know when i came to gujarat this is you people's barkat i would see on the occasion of khatmul quran the amount of importance attached to the quran e majid students would be given gifts and prizes etc this type of thing is not found in our diar alhamdulillah i went there and i started creating a awareness in them as well alhamdulillah today this type of thing is found amongst us as well half is a quran the qadar and the value of a half is a quran it is something very very great people come and they say my son in law is a half is a quran they understand the value of the half is of quran to connect oneself to the quran is saadat haqiqiya it is from the genuine saadat and great fortune allah taala says in the quran e majid alladheena aatainahum al kitab yatlunahu haqqa tilawatih those people to whom we have given the book yatlunahu haqqa tilawatih they recite it as it ought to be recited ulaika yu'minuna bi it is they who have conviction in it when they recite the quran as it ought to be recited these are the people who actually have conviction in the quran So understanding the Quran is a great treasure it is a great gift Imam Ghazali rahimahullahu ta'ala used to say about the Quran it is maktub rabbil alamin it is the letter from Allah to his bondsman 
to his to his bondsman and when a person picks up the letter his son is in another country he's writing a letter he reads it so carefully he honors that letter he's so worried about it he's trying to understand exactly what's written he reads be beyond it between the words between the lines so to understand the Qur'an is something very, very great. Reciting the Qur'an as it ought to be recited. يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ What is actually that? What does it, does it entail? It entails reading it, reciting it from memory, understanding it, pondering over it and practicing it. Allahu Akbar. Now just look at that. Tilawat. Hivz. Faham. Tadabbur. And amal, all this year, comes under the bracket. It entails reading the Quran as it ought to be recited. This is how it was explained by the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. Qal ibn Mas'ud, radiyallahu ta'ala an. Ibn Mas'ud, radiyallahu ta'ala an. Says, the author quotes, كان الرجل منا إذا تعلم أشر آيات لم يجاوزهن حتى يعرف معانيهن والعمل بهن. ابن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عن says that when one of us from amongst the Sahaba learned ten ayats, he would not learn any more until he knows the meaning of these ten and practices on them. Reading the Quran. Without understanding its meaning or practicing on its teachings is not considered to be reading in the true sense of the word. This is why Fudail ibn Ayaz rahimahullah ta'ala said, Innama nazal al Quran ul yu'malabi. The Quran was sent down that it may be practiced upon. Fattakhadan nasu qira'atahu amala. But people, what have they done now? They made its reading the amal itself. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah ta'ala honors his servant with the ability to read the Qur'an, ponder over it and impose on himself to practice on it, he will acquire a, few, uh, a, a, full, a full share of purification, a full and complete share of tazkiyah. When a person gets tawfiq and hidayat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to read Al-Qur'an, tilawat. Tadabbur, to ponder over the Qur'an and to impose on himself to practice on it. He makes it necessary upon himself to practice on Al-Qur'an. Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib uh, writes in his Risala, Tilawat Al-Qur'an, the ulama say that even if the Qur'an is read without understanding, it will earn its reader rewards. It will earn its reader rewards. So the Qur'an is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when a person looks at the works of his sheikh and he goes through it, how much of qadr he has for it. Today there is a great deficiency in our understanding and relationship of Al-Qur'an. Let us keep ta'alluq with the Qur'an and let us recite the Qur'an, study the Qur'an. The first verses of the Qur'an, alif, lam, meem, no one knows the meaning. Then to the hadith states, that a person will be rewarded even for those words that he doesn't understand at all. What's the essence of all this? Awamir. Al-amal bil awamir. To, uh, to make amal on the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to abstain from the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Tamir rahimahullah ta'ala used to say, Dawam ta'at and kathrat dhikr consistent perpetual obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the essence of this path to Allah is consistent perpetual continuous obedience of Allah and abundant dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep in our minds our weakness our deficiency is one of the greatest ways or it gives us the most what do you call this qurb Closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ajizi is not found. Helplessness, annihilation of oneself, the expression of helplessness in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not found in his court. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, al ajizu fakhri. This helplessness, this expression of helplessness to Allah that I'm weak 
and this is your makeup. You are weak. You cannot do. You cannot accomplish. To say this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's my pride. Sayyidina Rifai rahimahullah, such a great man of that caliber says that I went to the different, different doors to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at each door I found long, long lines. But I went to the door of Ajizi and expressing my helplessness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I went that route, that path. I found no one there. I entered the door. I reached Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when I look back, all the people were still standing at the doors of Amal. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala used to say, that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not keep the special ingredient in his path to reach him as ajizi and helplessness, what would we actually have done? He had made it easy by, for us by designating this as the recipe of reaching him. So Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala is the one who had laid the foundation for suluk and tasawuf. I'll tell you of an incident. Umar radiallahu ta'ala passes by Uthman. Uthman is in his own world he's overwhelmed in great thought and worry sorrow and grief he greets uthman uthman because of the state he is in doesn't reply he comes to abu bakr radiallahu ta'ala an omar says that i greeted uthman and he did not reply look at the answer of abu bakr radiallahu ta'ala an he doesn't come to a conclusion he says no wait wait a bit let me go and ask him there must be something he comes to uthman radiallahu ta'ala an and he says what's up uthman omar passed by you he greeted you and then to you you did not even reply he answers so beautifully Beautifully. I don't even know when Omar came. I don't even know when he went. Look at how pure their hearts were. And he goes on to say, what's troubling you? He says, this is troubling me, that I am overcome by grief, worry and sorrow. I am overwhelmed by waswasa and the whisperings of shaitan. But I am so sad about this that I did not ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam for the cure to this malady and this particular problem of mine. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and says, don't worry. I asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam about this year. It is that very same kalima, the repetition of it which kalima the very same kalima that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam presented to abu talib when he rejected it allahu akbar so imam nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala says man buliya bil waswasa the one who is challenged what waswasa and the whisperings of Shaitan, fa alayhi bi kalimati tayyiba. Then he should make incumbent upon himself kalima tayyiba. Mujaddid al Fethani rahimahullah ta'ala writes that saying kalima tayyiba once will make a person reach such great spiritual heights. He says himself, I have no greater desire than this that I find one quiet corner with complete peace. And I want to sit there and make takrar and the weird of the kalima tayyiba over and over again. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. But what to do? I have so many duties, so many responsibilities that I cannot finish with that. Allah Ta'ala this path to him, Rabba, we should not be ever become despondent. Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina wa akhta'na. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamaltahu ala alladheena min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bih. Wa'afu anna, waghfir lana, warhamna, anta maulana, fansurna ala alqawm alkafirin. Allah Ta'ala give us peace and make us mutma'in with this ta'aleem talimat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of Quran and Hadith. Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of making amal. You people heard and I spoke. I'm not even feeling well myself. But the silsila of passing on this message, this majlis that I have and I conduct, Alhamdulillah is carrying on for a long time. Now let us make dua. Allahumma a'atini imanan la yartaddu wa yaqeenan laysa ba'dahu kufru wa rahmatan analu biha sharfa karamatika fi dunya wal akhira. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-afwa wa al-afiyah fi al-deen wa al-dunya wa al-akhira. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-yusr wa al-mu'afat fi al-dunya wa al-akhira. Rabbana la taj'alna fitnatan lil-ladhina kafaru wa gfir lana rabbana innaka anta al-aziz al-hakim. 
الحكيم اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا وأصلح ذات بيننا واهدنا سبل السلام ونجنا من الظلمات إلى النور وجنبنا الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بطن وبارك لنا في أسماعنا وأبصارنا وقلوبنا وأزواجنا وذرياتنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم بحرمة سيد النبي الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم